Welcome to the Sports Hangover. I'm Michael Benatar, joined alongside J Dog. Mike, it's good to see you again. Uh, happy Father's Day. This is your first one. You've been a father for like four or five weeks now. So maybe yep. like you get a credit for one twelfth of a Father's Day this year. And next year, you'll get the full credit. Yeah, like I said, we didn't really celebrate uh, Mother's Day because we were half out of it. It was like a week after. <laughs> so we're, we're here. We're surviving. Father's Day was good. Uh, I got matching pair of shoes uh, with uh, the baby. So we have matching shoes now. Wow. Same size, too. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So it's good. That's a good it's, gift. Uh, you know, to be a proper father on Father's Day, you have to watch the U.S. Open yeah. with your son. So I'll give you a course. pass because he's only a few weeks old. But starting next year, you got to start this tradition because we had one hell of a U.S. Open Sunday. I was watching the sports shows today before NBA Finals talk, before Stanley Cup Finals talk on ESPN. Stephen A. is breaking down the golf. Golf for a day is the biggest sport, the biggest thing that happened. Mike, it doesn't always happen this way, but everyone who watched the U.S. Open came away with so many feelings, so many emotions. 24 hours later, I'm still trying to process it. Bryson beat Rory in just a crazy, wild, wacky U.S. Open Sunday. So I didn't watch a lot of it. I watched highlights. Was I don't know what I was doing. It's probably napping or uh, I don't know what I was doing. It was in the middle you afternoon. You actively chose not to watch it. Okay. okay. I did not know it was on. You guys started texting and it's like, all right, I'll turn it on. I literally turned it on as Bryson was walking out from under the tunnel to like win it. Like basically he was the winner. So I didn't really know what happened. I'm just like, he won. So what was so crazy? So tell me what happened because I saw the clips. But just inform me in case somebody didn't listen. Somebody or watch. Like you, absolutely. So Bryson entered with a three-shot lead, and I'm getting texts in the morning like, does Rory even have a, sh have a shot down three? I'm like, at a hard course like this, which, by the way, Pinehurst, North Carolina, I know you've never heard of it, Mike, but what you have heard of is Raleigh. And when we, me and you met in Raleigh six years ago, I played Pinehurst number two the day prior oh. to that. I just came from this course, the hardest golf course I've ever played in my life. The greens are like turtle shell backs where – if you don't hit it perfectly on top of the middle, it's going to roll off in any direction. I hit so many iron shots the day I played this course that were laser beams right at the flag, right at the green, right where I attended to, and the green would repel them and spit them out into the shit, into the waste area. So it is a hard course, and Bryson was in the shit all day. Somehow, I don't know how, Rory blew this thing in one of the ways, the worst ways we've ever seen in golf history. We've never seen, Mike, I, I promise you this. We've never seen a golf superstar of Rory's caliber blow it, choke it away in the biggest moment like he did yesterday at the U.S. Open. He was up two shots with like four holes to go, and he had three bogeys in his last four holes, including two putts less than three and a half feet, less than the length of your son, basically. <laughs> that yeah. This guy missed. You can make three-footers. I've seen you do it all the time. You make this putt. Golfer is much worse than you. Make three-footers. He missed one on 16, two and a half feet. He missed one on 18, three feet. That one was moving a lot. He still should have made it, but it was a harder putt on, on the slope. And he choked in a way that we just don't see superstars, really anyone do. And going back in golf history, Greg Norman's up there. Vandeveld up is up there. Rory is now up there. I don't know how he recovers from this, Mike. He hasn't won a major in 10 years going into Whoa. it. Me and Mutual Friend, we're at the U.S. Open in L.A. last year, and Rory has the lead on Sunday. We think we're going to witness history during the nine-year drought, and he lost by one shot there out here at LACC. And now for the second year in a row, he loses by a shot after he was up too late in the day. Just a miserable choke by Rory. And then the whole flip side of it is Bryson, which we'll talk about too. So well, I, the only thing I know what's going on with Rory is he, had a, he was going to get a divorce. Then they're, they canceled the divorce, and then they're back together. What's going on back there? Like, I feel like the game of golf is all mental because sometimes, listen, I get out there, I can hit the ball, and then uh, I get tired five rounds in or whatever, and I'm, I'm exhausted. Like five holes in, I'm like, all right, I'm kind of done for the day. It's a mental game. And I'm not, I'm not there. It is and mental, Rory... and it's, it's mental, and, and Rory fizzled in the mental moment. I would say physically, Rory is on a different level than us, and that guy is sure. so fit. maybe a little. He's like not even a big dude, but he's so tight, and he swings with such speed. I just got to show this picture that I have. I, oh. I don't have many golfers uh, pictures with me and them, but this is me and Rory. Uh, we know each other well. <laughs> We've had a few long conversations. Uh, we'll talk about my relation to Bryson soon, too. I did not like seeing Rory... 
um, fumble the bag like this. This was uncomfortable for me to watch. Physically uncomfortable. I was like groaning. I was making noises. It was so emotional because I know the guy and I know how much he wants it. And to go 10 years and Mike, there's a whole nother level of this PGA versus live. Think about how Rory has been the outspoken face of the PGA Tour versus Bryson DeChambeau who went to live and is like the poster boy for what some people might think is is annoying or awkward or not uh, fully uh, on board with professional golf. And, and it's Rory and Bryson. It's Liv versus PGA. It's Europe versus the U.S. Did you hear all the USA chants for Bryson? Yeah. Which is crazy that this guy heel turned into a popular player. Didn't like two years ago, everyone disliked Bryson. You don't like yeah. Bryson, right? I, I was, I was pro-Liv, so I, I was there. You were there. But, uh, yeah. but Bryson, I have a picture back here. I'll just pull this one out, too. So Bryson's the other golfer I have a picture with. These were not framed today. These are the only two golfers I have pictures with, Mike. And uh, one is Bryson, one is Rory. They both squared off here. Bryson is a great dude. I think he's often misunderstood. I've been rooting for him since I got to work with him personally. And he's been through a lot. He went to live. No one talks about him anymore. He won a U.S. Open during COVID, which you have a thought on COVID championships. They might not be real, they uh, are real. Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, because there was no fans at his. And so think about the difference in fans at this U.S. Open, chanting for him, chanting USA. He's high-fiving the crowd the whole time. Like I can't yeah. even process the heel turn that he made and how he got so popular. Nothing changed. He's still awkward, kind of weird. He's still Bryson. I don't know why the crowd supported him over, over Rory, who I thought a lot of people liked. It's just such a crazy, crazy day. So what happens to Rory? Like, this sounds just like a downfall. He is popular, but he hasn't won anything, right, in a while. He and wins PGA Tour events, but do those matter, especially in a live world? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And, it, I mean, what? there's so many questions I have. It's like, what's going on with PGA and Live? Are they merging? Is it just, like, a fantasy that they want to merge? What's going to happen with Rory? Like, why has there been no leader in the golf world like Tiger at all. Like, I feel like Tiger still draws just as much audience. Like, I went to that event in uh, the Palisades just because I thought <laughs> Tiger was going to be there, not for anybody else. But he withdrew the <laughs> he, day before. He went in the ambulance. <laughs> yeah, and he wasn't there. So I just, he I feel like the, the sport of golf needs stuff like this. And I like that Bryson does all those, like, custom clubs and weird things with, like, balls and everything like that. So I think that's fun. It's a fun part about the sports. It's evolving a lot, but I just don't know. Does Rory still hold that caliber of golfer that we still expect from him? Like, is he the golfer that you go out to see, or or is it changing? Is all the all the live guys are they the guys that everybody wants to see now? Rory's almost becoming a sideshow now, and that he can't win a major, and that's like like I said, it's uncomfortable for me to mention or even talk about because the guy is so good, but it's now been ten years over 40 majors since he's won one and he won four at such a young age when he's 25 and he won four majors he is the next tiger he was that he was the prodigy of ireland like tiger was of the u.s and for whatever reason he's gone 40 some majors without winning now and and like i said it's been two years in a row second place it's like phil mickelson had never won a u.s open six times phil mickelson was a runner-up like this is a real uh putting the the u.s open on a pedestal putting the major on a pedestal and you can't mentally overcome it and we saw Bryson just like live in the moment and execute so many wild shots you're not a big time golfer but I know when you see the highlights for him under the tree trying to pitch it out on the 18th hole to win a US Open the bunker shot the, the bunker shots are hard anytime this is a 55 yard bunker shot which is like five uh, you know half a football field that's really far yeah. for a bunker shot to be exactly perfect like that to get up and down the shots he executed were amazing he gets full credit and then the choke by Rory who leaves who goes in we saw him on camera watching the Bryson win, which was so uncomfortable, and like the depression come across his face. You don't see that a lot in sports. You don't have that access to guys. That was so sad. Rory goes to the parking lot. He peels out. You actually hear the tires peeling out of the gravel parking lot, Mike. It was just an insane, an insane, the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, two of the biggest characters in all of golf shocking day at the u.s open people are saying this might get more people to watch golf it was that good of Whoa. a show the golf can't always be this good but yesterday was as good as it gets in my lifetime mike as good as it gets on a final round sunday i know tiger wasn't there i know it wasn't phil but think about it tiger and phil never had a one-on-one -on -one like rory and bryson had yesterday it's so rare two of the best actually meet the moment in the end and there's this heartbreak and triumph um the best the best i can recall you the love best it. i've seen i'm so glad I'm so sad you didn't watch it, actually. I didn't watch. It was Father's Day. I was, I was relaxing. I, I have no idea what I was doing. I was watching the text messages come through, so I'm like, something's happening. So 
I'm glad you got to experience it. Uh, I'll, I'll watch the next one. I got a bet on it. You know, you got to tell me who the bet on so I can be there. Well, we didn't do a show last week. I had notes I on Bryson and Rory to bet on, of course, and we couldn't do a show as you move into your new studio, which looks amazing with partial nudity behind you. Um, yeah. It looks great, uh, but we didn't do a show last week, so I couldn't give you we my didn't. picks. It's, it's just the problem is everyone's going to tune in for the Open and the next event, and hopefully it's great. It's never this great. This is as good as it gets, and I'm worried we might go like another lifetime until it gets this good. Hopefully not, but um, man, I just if anyone wants to talk to me about it, I'll do a call afterwards with our viewers. I just, I just want to keep talking about it because it was so special. Special. I want to like write a journal entry, maybe a blog. I don't know. It was, it yeah, was write a blog. I'm, write it, write so it all down. <laughs> well, let, you want to talk about NHL, NBA? I know we got NBA tonight. Have you yeah. watched anything? What have you been watching other than golf? Well, the NBA finals aren't happening because that ended oh. at, when the Western Conference finals ended and, um, and uh, Luca beat the Wolves and, and our boy. That was it because we don't watch the East. We don't really watch the East. And so the idea East. that the Celtics are in a series, the Celtics are going to win the finals. Boston, it's like very relevant to me. Not, I'm not a part of this NBA Finals. Have you been watching it? I, I have been watching. So I, I, I bet on uh, last week for Dallas to win. It, they won, and I'm excited for tonight because I think Boston overall, they're hopefully going to lose tonight because they, they keep putting quotes out for Game 5 yeah. saying, What's that quote hey, that you saw? Yeah. The quote that I saw was like, oh, if we lose Game 5, it's no big deal. Like, it's nothing. Like, there's another game. So... They're not in it. I think the that's, Mavs are. By the way, I think that's the same quote that Rory had when he bogeyed 14. He's like, oh, who cares? I have a few more holes left. And look what can happen. He's a perfect yeah. example of if you don't step on it right now, Boston, like you could easily uh, give this back up because they don't want to go back to Dallas. But uh, just not a great series. A lot of blowouts, right? Not real watchable. Well, the, the game fours were blowouts, both in the NHL. They, this identical series. It's like Oilers yeah. all of a sudden beat uh, – the Panthers eight to one. It was a terrible game tomorrow night. The next game is there. Uh, but I think um, my prediction right now, cause you're going to be listening to this could be Wednesday this week. My prediction, Dallas wins tonight and the Panthers win the cup tomorrow night. And then I don't know what happens after that, but Panthers are going to win back in Florida. I felt like they just let them, let them do it. I don't know if you've watched any of the hockey, but those fans in Edmonton are insane. Like, the most vibe you've ever witnessed in your life of a sporting event. It is something you want to witness in real life. Like everybody there in jerseys, like, you know, the $150, everybody in jerseys. So it was exciting to watch, but I think Panthers are going to win it. And it worked out for Edmonton. Didn't they win like eight to one in the last yeah. game of this year? Yeah, but that's, they, they've been struggling. Yeah, they pulled the goalie. It was, it was a whole mess. You, what you describe about Canadian hockey fans, no surprise, and the Edmonton arena is much different from what I'm hearing about the Florida Panthers. I grew up in South Florida, called my dad on Father's Day yesterday, who's in South Florida, said, hey, what's the buzz on the Florida Panthers? He <laughs> said, uh, me and the neighbor watched one of the Rangers games last oh, week. No. That was about all I can say about it. So no one is fired up about the Panthers in South Florida. I know you're a Florida hockey guy from the other coast for supporting the Lightning but yeah. um, it almost feels like Edmonton deserves to win because people care more. Is that a crazy thing to say? No, I, yeah, no, I agree. I, I think uh, <laughs> people in Canada care a lot more than people in South Florida where it's 110 <laughs> degrees out uh, so when hot. they're playing hockey in a frozen rink on the inside. That's true. Yeah, they do. But the Panthers are good, and it's a, it's a real hockey team. They've been really good. So I'm excited to watch that game. I'm excited to watch the Mavs tonight because I got money on them. I've won a lot of money betting against my future bet. And that's how I've been doing it. I put Mavs to win and Panthers to win, but I've been betting against them only on game four to win a little more money. So it's been fun. Are you there? Are you frozen? What's going on? So, Mike, what happens if the Mavs win tonight? Do they win again in game six in Dallas? Do they win this series? Are you betting on all that? J-Dog, you there? J-Dog? Right. You're back. You're back. All right. I'm back. Let's, back. Let, I'll pick it up. I keep writing down all the times timestamps that I need to cut out on this goddamn podcast. <laughs> So many. <laughs> I hope you leave this in so people can hear uh, the, the real stuff. All right, you want to transition? Should we transition? Yeah, yeah. What do you want to do? I got some bullshit or believe. I got uh, – what, what do you want to do? Let's hit that bullshit or believe, Mike. Let's hear it. All right. Let's see uh, Let's see if I can find it here. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. There it is. Bullshit or believe time. Bullshit or believe time. Bullshit or believe. All right. I got, I got a lot of bullshit or believe. So we can power through this pretty quickly. I have a longer one, but this is the short one. We talked about J.J. Redick. We talked about all this stuff, the Lakers head yeah. coach. Yeah. It looks like J.J. Redick will be the head coach. And I felt like this other guy, Dan Hurley, was a ploy to get J.J. Redick at a lower cost to come over and coach the Lakers. 
I like the theory. I'll say believe it's a ploy okay. about something. I'm going to say it's a believe that uh, that they were denied by, by Dan Hurley. And, and the yeah. idea that Dan Hurley chose UConn, a college in Connecticut, versus the Lakers of Los Angeles, like the idea that he would actually yeah. choose means it was never a real thing. So whatever the ploy is means that he was never going there because anyone making a real decision between Connecticut or the Lakers, like NIL is ruining college sports. We've talked so much about yes. this. All the greats of college sports, Nick Saban is going to sit on a TV set this fall instead of coach on the sidelines because he's so sick of the bullshit of college sports. But a man not even coaching college football where all the money is, but coaching college basketball – and living in the state of Connecticut yeah. versus L.A., he, this was never a real decision. So there, we're up to something here. But it is also embarrassing for the Lakers that they either, one, actually thought Dan Hurley would come to them and was denied, or B, would do this whole song and dance to make it act like they went after Dan Hurley to mm -hmm. then settle on J.J. Redick. It's bullshit whatever way you slice it because the Lakers have fallen several rungs on the organizational depth chart of sports because they're embarrassing throughout this whole process. Wow. Hot take, you know, Hot take. I, I do think that it was a song and dance, but I think they were like, because how does all this leak? How does the contract of $70 million come out? Like, we offered him $70 million, which I guess was like a lower end of a high-end coaching price for some yeah, it's reason. it's not that much when you think about our taxes in L.A. And 35 mil gets True. chopped right away, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it does seem like it would be weird if J.J. does become the head coach because he does a podcast with him. It's basically like if they hire J.J., LeBron is the coach. And we'll see what happens. I think we'll be a mess of an organization. And maybe they just leave and he goes and plays with uh, with Bronny, which we've talked about all year. We don't have to talk about it here, but we got a lot of summer content coming. So we can talk about Bronny much later in, in the year. But we I just do. think this On is going to be a mess. On the subject of the Lakers ownership, Mike, you bring up the Lakers ownership. That's a great question. Who owns the Lakers right now? Because it sure seems like LeBron owns the Lakers. What has he been saying so far this offseason? Hey, I'm going to start a podcast with this guy. Can you hire my podcast co-host to be mm -hmm. our head coach? We've had this discussion before, but how silly if I walk into my corporate office tomorrow and say, guys, I know you have a great plan for what we're doing for the Olympics, but uh, I've got a podcast co-host who has a great idea. Let's bring him in to coach the whole thing. Hey. Like, that's a bad decision. I'm just <laughs> telling you that's a bad move. That's a bad decision. That's me not being the best for my company and that's what lebron is doing by bringing jj in it's like let me just hire my buddy instead of the best coach dan hurley would have been an actual good coach for them also what else is lebron saying this whole offseason just you mentioned it draft my son is the second mm -hmm. thing he's saying not only hire my friend to coach draft my son lebron is operating but like he owns this proud franchise he's just a player without a contract is all he is why do we have to give him everything and if we are giving him everything again why isn't he the actual head coach why do we have to have a figurehead jj be the head coach what do you do though if you have the best player in the nba or maybe ever in the nba lebron yeah. that can be debated with any anybody you want but the best player currently in the nba or legacy player you gotta kind of like appease to him a little bit right like you saw him sitting next to genie there laughing like he's schmoozing them up i think this is gonna happen I think, honestly, it'll be more fun to watch it just all crumble in front of them with Bronny there and JJ there. It's just going to be a mess. So why not let it happen? It'll be fun for us. I'd love to go to a game and just watch it fall apart because I almost purchased um, season tickets for the Kings. I'm like, you know what? Wow. If the Lakers get this mess of an organization, it might be just fun to go. The tickets might be cheap if they're really bad or even the Clippers. Um, but yeah, I was trying. I really want to get season tickets, like partial. Like I don't want to go all the games. I want to go like half season. I want to go to some games this You're listing a lot of franchises here. How about like a crypto.com season ticket? So like whatever's going on that night, oh. you just get to go. Is that a, those is that are, a thing? Th those are, that is a thing. It's a little more <laughs> expensive. You have to buy like a, a box or something like that. And it's like starts yeah, at $100,000. We'll, we'll so. we'll yeah, we'll, we'll figure I it out. I agree with you. It's going to burn and fail. We both agree on that if they hire JJ. So my question is, why are they doing it, first of all? And two... Why, why doesn't LeBron just do it himself? If it's all about LeBron and his son's going to be on the team and his buddy's going to be coaching the team, I don't know. Why, doesn't, why don't we just, and you said this a few weeks ago, I think it was your idea, LeBron should just coach the damn team and that would be more entertaining than anything because yeah. he's drawn up the plays and like after the game, LeBron passed in that moment. That means the head coach passed in that moment or LeBron took the shot. The head coach wanted him to take the shot because he's the head coach. It's like all these things would come into play. That'd be more interesting than the idea of J.J. Redick just figureheading for him. What if the real conspiracy theory is no one wants to coach there and JJ literally is just a guy that they'll convince to coach there just to have this like inner interim uh, head coach until LeBron leaves and then they'll reorganize the organization after that. That's what I think is really going to happen.
Because it's a, it's going to be. Why would mess. JJ sign up for that though, right? Because he's got a, a comfy job uh, broadcasting the NBA Finals on the number one team. By the okay. way, he's going to leave that job, which is great. But if if I offered you, you're currently let, let's say he's making five million a year doing that, he can make ten, twenty times his salary being a head coach for one year. I would probably go do that and fail miserably just to do it, get it under your belt. Then you can go like coach somewhere else and and just kind of see how it goes. And you can always say I you, you coach LeBron. I completely disagree. Josh McDaniels got a chance to be a head coach at a young age, and he completely failed and fumbled the bag, and I think he's out of football at this point. Is he out of the NFL? Do, do we Listen, know? Does he have a job? All those guys that, that fail. JJ with one bad year? But you could also say, like, Raheem Morris did that too, right? He coached, and then he got booted out to, like, uh, assistant back. coach, and now he's, he's back. He's back. Yeah. So I think, I think you get a second chance. Maybe not a third chance, but you definitely get a second chance. There's a whole subplot here of – Everyone's talking about inside the NBA and Charles Barkley retiring yeah. and all these things about that show going away when they lose the NBA rights. The ESPN booth is more important than anything because they have all the playoffs. They have all the NBA finals. And they've rotated Jeff Van Gundy, Doc Rivers, and now J.J. Reddick. They're going to be on their fourth person in that booth in like a year's time. Like how bad like is that whole situation for them? For the, the number – like you would never see this at the number one NFL team. Like we're seeing Brady come in and well, take Olsen out. But at least there's stability at the top. There's not guys leaving for other jobs jobs constantly but espn does that even with like the booger mobile and all that stuff with witten there was <laughs> like a, a mess- series of bad decisions <laughs> yeah they make a lot of bad decisions i don't know why and then isn't doris burke there the entire time like doing it with different people so it's like how does she get a flow with anybody imagine you just rotated a new host in every week it'd be a fucking mess of a show you'd be like no one knows anything what are we going to talk about this is 14 years running so it's it's really hard you're right. And, and so in that regard, I want JJ to go coach the Lakers because I want to see okay, how good. they're going to bring someone else in, the fifth person into this, uh, this thing, and, and let the ESPN booth fail just like the Lakers head coaching situation will fail. All right. I got one more bullshit or believe, and then I got some blind items. Okay. I know you love some blind items real quick, so we'll, we'll power <laughs> through this. Late night blind <laughs> items. Mike's <laughs> been uh, going through this. This is, this is a longer one. Uh, today uh, on Instagram or something, like Ayuk mentioned that the San Francisco doesn't want him. I think it was his like wife recording him talking to, uh, I don't even know who, Jalen Brown, I think, talking or something. Jaden Daniels, uh, the new Daniels. Commanders uh, quarterback. Yes. Basically, like, they don't want me. So what I did was I went to ChatGPT and did some research. I've been doing a ton of research on ChatGPT. I have a custom oh. GPT that pulls information from everywhere. And are these I wanted where your to see sports takes are coming from these days, Mike. No, 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 no. They're, they're not coming from these days. They're <laughs> they're coming from the uh, the data set that I have. So right now, okay. where would you rank Ayuk as a wide receiver? Like amongst all wide receivers, where would you rank him? I think I have him lower than most people. Um, I would think that I rank him around twenty fifth best receiver in the NFL. Oh, okay. Well, according yeah, to Pro Football Network. He is eighth on that on their stat data list there, and top ten uh, according to PFF. So that's where he's ranking. So I don't know if he's getting the use uh, in San Francisco as like one of those. Like I wouldn't put him on that list. But then I wanted to play a game. I have a ton of people here, but I just want to say: Would you rather have Ayuk or this player? And just tell me, list oh, it fun off. Game. Into, yeah. yeah, we'll just go okay. through real quick. Okay, so okay. would you rather have Justin Jefferson? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. I, I got to throw him out yeah, here because yeah. I, I listed yeah, I uh, you know a few guys. Okay, what about Tyree? Jamar Chase? Yes, I'd rather have Jamar Chase too. <laughs> and you, and Jamar Chase? Okay, what about Devonte? Devonte is old. I'd still rather have Devonte than Ayuk. Okay, what about Cooper Cup? Now you're talking about hmm. man-made things because I'm afraid Cooper <laughs> Cup was man-made by Sean McVay and not a real <laughs> a real receiver on like a different okay. team. So I'm afraid okay. I have to take Ayuk on that one. Ayuk. Okay. All right. What about yeah. Stephon Diggs? Stefan Diggs caused so many problems in Buffalo. They gave him away for free. Houston, yeah. Houston signed him for a lot of money. Yeah. I don't think they had to, but they did. They didn't, yeah. CJ Stroud has Stefan Diggs now. That's <laughs> kind of cool for this season. We'll talk about that. Um, I would take Diggs over Ayuk, actually. Okay, all right. What about uh, CD Lamb? Definitely CD Lamb. You know, I'm a CD Lamb uh, homer. You know, I you support are. the Cowboys. You, you, don't, you do I support do. the Cowboys. Okay, what about, well, here's, some, here's some other guys. What about like T. Higgins? That's about equal for me. I think Ayuk and equal. Higgins are about equal. Yeah. What about DK Metcalf? I'm taking DK, the specimen, okay. the size of him. Get him out of Seattle right. where you have someone better than Geno Smith tossing balls. I want to see DK there. All right, what, last one. What about DeAndre? DeAndre Hopkins, a little old, but still catching balls. 
Wait a second. What team is he on now? He's on the tennis. I think he's still on the Tennessee Titans. He's on the Titans? Yeah. He was there last year. Remember the rookie was thrown to him? I had him yeah. in fantasy. That's the only reason why I know no, he's no. there. Hopkins is kind of downhill. I, I, I'll go okay. Ayuk over Hopkins. How about Ayuk or Debo Samuel? Because I'm going Debo Samuel there. How about you? I'd probably go Debo too. I, I think Ayuk is like a guy that you can use in different scenarios, but I don't know. You can't have so many guys that are like multi skilled and use them all correctly. Like you almost need like one guy to do that. So you can have like real wide receivers do other. I don't know. And wasn't Ayuk injured a lot or was that Debo? They both are. Uh, but uh, like, why, okay. what is Ayuk known for to the point you're making? Like a lot of those guys you listed, they're known for something. Chase makes incredible catches and T yeah. Higgins has big size. Like Ayuk, he's just a guy. Like even Debo's size like stands out. You throw him the ball and he runs over people. Uh, Ayuk does yeah. not do that. Uh, it also goes back to like, does Brock Purdy make both of those receivers or can they flourish much better without him. It's hard for me to say. I know what you would say. I, well, Brock, Brock is good. He might be a Super yeah, Bowl champ. Support, we, we're going to have a nice Thank summer, you. summer show coming up, which is, we're going to talk about all this too. I thought you were going to say we're going to have Brock on the show, which I was like, damn, when, when is that? We should try to get I Brock. Wish, I feel I like wish. he's so anonymous. We could get Brock on the show. That's like a you level think? of guest who would come on the sports hangover. I mean, our biggest guest so far was Marvin Jones. So and I think he's out of the NFL now. So that's how long we've been doing this show. <laughs> Uh, we've been doing it a long time. And he was a yeah, big guest yeah. at the time. He was, he, he was, was, he was a big guest. Speaking of the Niners, you just had a bullshitter believe on them. I have a bullshitter believe yeah. on the Niners. Give it to me. Christian McCaffrey is on the cover of Madden. Bullshitter believe. Do you support it or not? Um, I don't like. I don't know if this is true. I saw somewhere. It's like the last running back that was on the cover was Peyton Hillis. And uh, it did not go well for him. I think he was done after after that. First running back since Peyton yeah. Hillis was on the cover. A couple of, of white Madden. running backs. That stands out right away when you say that. So I would say never take the opportunity to be on a cover. Uh, never ends well. Uh, do it when you think you're getting a new contract maybe and you have a year to recover. Um, I don't like it. I think there is a Madden curse, and I don't think you should go on this cover. Because didn't the season Lamar, what, something happened to Lamar, I feel like he wasn't that good that season. Like Things are actually happening, and I feel like, do not put me on that cover at all. There was a streak years ago. I feel like the streak like kind of broke up a little bit, but it was year after year. Guys were suffering terrible injuries mm -hmm. after being on, on Madden. I was looking at it from a different perspective of how dumb it is to put a running back on a Madden video game when running the ball is so boring when you play Madden. Madden is all about drawing up the pass plays, making pass plays, West Coast offense, deep bombs, whatever you're cooking, cook the passing plays. The idea of handing off to McCaffrey and running up to the line and maybe the computer AI offensive line blocks and maybe they don't, it's like the worst part of Madden and the idea that we'd have a running back on there in 2024 blew my mind. Even if it's McCaffrey, terrible decision. Um, by the way, we're going to play some Madden uh, Friday. You're coming over. We're going to play. Yeah. Hopefully you're out here that's again great. when we play a little NCAA because I think that's going to be better than any Madden we've played Are you going to buy the game? This is a big, of course. A big, a big year for it. Well, yeah, you're definitely going to buy the game. an NCAA guy. Well, I mean, I haven't been able to because it hasn't been out. So I'll play <laughs> NCAA just to like play it because it's going to be so much better than Madden. Uh, I have exactly. two blind items. If you want to listen to them, you know the blind items yes. are fun. Yes. If we got, do you want to do it real quick? Just set this up. This is Mike doing late night feedings, a little bit delirious, a little bit on the dark web, the, the inner web. We don't know exactly where he's finding these. We don't know if they're real, but we like to talk about them. Yes, there's a there's a community of people that love these things called blind items, and it's it's like it's like a form of Scandal City, but anonymous people are submitting theories about certain people and there's a ton like i could there's tons on celebrities these are the only two i could find in the month of june for these two okay. so there's two that i'm gonna uh, that are i'm gonna line up for you so this one's on aaron Rodgers. usually the way they do it so i'll, I'll do the second one first then we'll go back to aaron Rodgers. so this is how they usually do it okay. the former a-list athlete turned larger than life personality fears every single day the public will discover his boyfriend so that's how they set it up and then they say <laughs> And the athlete is Shannon Sharp. And that is who, that's a blind item that was out there about so Shannon Sharp. So this is Sharp. about Shannon Sharp with a boyfriend, you're saying? With a boyfriend. So this is, listen, just seeing what the internet gives me, and this is what the blind items are saying out there. I don't you know, know if this is a really big deal. Say that. Shannon Sharp just signed a new deal with ESPN. He's been, he's been like on ESPN a lot with Stephen A. on First Take, which yeah. is great. But he has a podcast. I think it's called Club Shay Shay. Uh, yeah, he does I it with Chad Ochocinco. It. It's wild. Uh, he had Cat Williams on. The one that yeah. he had Cat Williams on was completely wild. And Cat Williams was talking about gay rumors of a lot of rappers and a lot of people at the time. 
just fascinating as you reveal that rumor that he said that on Shannon Sharp's podcast. If you're telling me Shannon Sharp might also be involved in the rumor, um, and know. we don't know, we're not validating or confirming no. any of it, of course. But you're sharing. Um, you know, I like Shannon Sharp. I didn't always love him as a player. Mm. A little brash, a little outspoken. I yeah. think he gets media. Like he just gets it. He and does. He's entertaining and he's funny, and that's what we care about. He's he's really good on TV because I think he know he knows he's on TV. And he's passionate about it. And you can see it come across. A lot of guys are just like very like tight. This guy is wild. His podcast is pretty yeah. good too. Like with uh, Ojo Singo. They're, they're they fucking just some shit, right? Yeah. But they put it out like Sunday night at like 10 p.m. Uh, West Coast time. Like there's, they're dropping like Sunday night recaps on stuff. It's pretty good. Shannon's always working. Morning and night. Always working. All right. The next, the next blind item is on Aaron Rodgers. And supposedly he's avoiding minicamp because if you can't find him, you can't test him. So you can't drug test them if you can't be found at minicamp. Uh, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. Where you're going with this? Like he's missing? Like he's trying to stay away? He's, he, what, is he, what drugs is he on? Tell us. We don't, I don't know what drugs. They're just, he's oh. not showing up at mandatory minicamp. He's not there. And supposedly the blind item is if you can't find him, you can't drug test them. That is what they're saying on the internet. And people know where he is. I just don't know where he is. And I don't know where he, why he's not there because he was there earlier in the summer, right? Wait, wasn't he practicing? And yeah, we saw a video of him walking gingerly on his Achilles recently. And we're like, is he yeah. even healed? And then he was so upset by that video, he stopped showing up to training camp. Yeah, something. so I don't know what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. That will affect uh, my over under prediction on the Jets later this year, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So those are my two blind These items. Blind items are hilarious to me. The Sports Hangover was founded on um, yeah. BS, lies, and rumors, and this is perfect for like how we started. We should just do yeah. a whole show of blind items this summer. Probably would There's be a, a great lot, yeah. one to just uh, bat bat through some of them. Um, Aaron Rodgers, that was a big deal last week. The Jets head coach Sala kind of threw him under the bus by yeah. making it a big deal, by saying he's not going to be here, he's got an event. And then it's like we start asking questions like, where is he? Is he at the RFK event? Well, we haven't seen him there yet, but maybe he's doing something with RFK, which I know you would support. Um, it is an open question. Like, why, if he's so indebted to his team, and he just missed a whole year, why would he not be there at a mandatory weekend? Um, it raises a lot of questions, and I think you're right to start asking him. Yeah. Football season's getting close. A uh, mutual friend and I, we're going out to Vegas. We're going to enter all the contest. I'm going to be sending out emails very soon, mid-July, to enter our super contest again. I hope you join. That's crazy. I'm going to make it cheaper this happening. year. Wow. I'm going to make it cheaper. cheaper this year to incentivize multiple entries. I think that's the key to getting more multiple bodies in. Multiple entries. I don't like that right off the bat. I always like picks of integrity. Mike, who'd you pick this week? Well, I picked 12 games spread across my three entries. Like, that's a lot. But if you're trying to win money, the strategy is like you have your most confident pick. So like your team one and then team three through four, five or four, whatever you have are like, hey, these are my second tier confidence. But I have the two most confident in every lineup, which also could screw you over. But we'll see. I'll, I'll talk it through with you later because it'll, it'll be fun. I, I like the one the one picks only one picks okay. only. I thought you were going to raise the money. I'm going in the complete opposite way. Should I should I raise it and just have raise the buy in and and. Only allow one entry per person. Okay. All right. It, then it's got to be pretty high then. Because I, I want a bigger payout. I think the quarterly payouts are wor- should be worth more. And the, the loser award, the booby award, should be also worth quite a bit. I don't think people understood the booby award last year. It's very easy to be the worst if you want to be the worst. Uh, you can, you just have to make a decision mid season and you have yeah. to be like quick with the decision. If you just wait yeah. a few weeks to pivot, then you screw yourself. You got to like commit to what your record is really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's if you have multiple entries, you I can had, kind of I play both one, ends. I had one more blind item for you. Bill yeah, Belichick is dating a 24 year old cheerleader. Did you see that one? I did see that. Is it real? Is she like real? I feel like it's as real as the other blind items we've talked about. <laughs> I, he just doesn't seem so. Wasn't he married? Like I feel like I watched a documentary with him and like a he wife. He was married. We saw him on the ring camera. Uh, was it last yeah. year? He popped out shirtless on his this broad's ring camera. That's how we knew he was dating in the Boston area. I love and it. Now apparently he uh, he got a uh, a former cheerleader. She's twenty four and she's shacking up with old man Bill. That's just uh, bothers me a little bit. I think. Good for Bill. Bill needs some. <laughs> he needs to smile a little more. You saw him smile a little bit at the roast. That was nice to see him smile. It was good. That was nice. And he smiles yeah. with Pat McAfee too. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. So uh, we'll do a show next week. Uh, check out the Sports Hangover. Shows are up there. Subscribe to us on YouTube. 
Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Tell your friends. Even if you don't watch on YouTube, just go subscribe. Just support the show. That's all we want. We don't ask for money. We just want you to subscribe on the, on the YouTube channel. So go do that. It's youtube.com backslash sports hangover. Uh, that's it. Good show.